What's this all about? Why are they doing that? What's going on here? It's Curious John. What is he curious about today? Taiwan's neighbor to the south, the Philippines, is increasingly making its presence felt here. A mixed community of migrant workers, white-collar professionals, and permanent immigrants has grown up in recent years. Blogger and media personality Jem is at the center of it all. She runs YouTube channel Hello Phil Thai, and she appears on TV and at events too, all with the goal of bridging the gap between Taiwan and the Philippines. Last week, she joined us for an overview of who is coming to Taiwan from the Philippines and why. This week, we're continuing our discussion with a look at problems Philippine workers can face here. We'll also hear more about the Philippine community, as well as Jem's own story of coming to Taiwan and her views on efforts to bring the Philippines into Taiwan schools. When Filipinos here run into problems with their employer, uh, what resources do they have? They don't. Nothing. Yeah, it's difficult. Just to be fair with the Taiwanese government, we do have hotlines, but many of them can't call because they call agents are speaking in Mandarin and other things, they speak in English. So it's quite difficult for some Filipinos because they can't really express what's in their heart. When I had my translation class, we were told by our instructor that there's no Filipino call agents because there are less problems from the Filipinos. But what they don't know is no one's calling because you can't talk to any Filipino agent. Although I tried to call 1999 and the service has improved a bit, they're going to connect you to someone that can speak in Filipino. And they don't know that Filipinos have different dialects. To get back to your question, like, how? First, they contact their agent. Mm -hmm. And then with the factory workers, they call it uh, their coordinator with the broker. Many of them are given the option of just going home to the Philippines. Like, you know that feeling that you don't have a choice, so you just have to agree and you just have to get back to the Philippines and your dreams are gone? Right. That kind of feeling. We have MECO, that's Manila Economic and Cultural Office, but because of the limited people and the number of demands for help, many just settled for, like, I'm just going to get home. Yeah, maybe Taiwan's not for me. <laughs> I feel bad because I really wanted my Filipino friends to really have that kind of security in Taiwan. Since I know Taiwanese people are really kind. I hope the hotlines would really employ Filipinos so that when they call, they have this someone to talk to. Now, you mentioned that there are so many different languages spoken in the Philippines. And yeah. People coming to Taiwan come from all over the islands. Is there a sense of community solidarity or do people from different areas or ethnic groups tend to hang out with each other only? It's not about ethnicity. They gather differently because of the church. 90% of the Filipinos are Roman Catholic. So normally, they would gather on the area where there's this Roman Catholic church. So they function together, they do events together on that area. Taiwan is the big island, and it's difficult to gather all the Filipinos at one place because each area are free to, to have their own events. For me, Filipinos still are proud to be part of the Filipino community. Even in the Philippines, we're mixed. Like, even if you're from Manila, there are a lot of Visaya or Cebu there. Right. We have one language we use to communicate to each other, since we have a lot of dialects, right? So we use Filipino. Uh, what made yeah. you yourself decide to come to Taiwan and start a new life here? I fell in love. I decided to leave my life in, in the Philippines and come here and live with my beloved. You know, love, move everything. I'm an English teacher then, but I, I quit my job for my kids. So right now I'm a full-time mom and uh, I do some events. I'm a host as well. I have a YouTube that's Hello Phil Thai. And I also have my own Facebook page. I'm a blogger. So that's the same Hello Phil Thai. I really wanted to like improve services towards the working population because I know how good and kind-hearted Taiwanese people are. And I hope that some other friends would have the same experience and would be the real Taiwanese. What sorts of things have you done to help fellow Filipinos here? Since 
2007, that's the year I came here, I, I made a network organization. So that's why it's like a media for the Filipinos. We gather, we post an event, we share information, and I've been like a counselor to them. So if they have a problem like with employers and their companies, they come to send me a message. Even if I don't know them, people would like recommend the page and they would ask some questions and I would give suggestions. And then apart from being a counselor for 24 hours, I also encourage people to help other people, not only here in Taiwan, but most especially back in the Philippines. So we do donations like clothing, toys, and food. So I've been doing that for 12 years. Since 2013, many more media come to know field time. So I appeared on TV shows and I have a lot of online interviews or like magazine features. So it's like more on uplifting and boosting the reputation of the Filipino people, allowing the Taiwanese to know the working population of the Filipinos right here is just like less than 1% of what really Filipino is. That's really less than what they should know about us. When you first came here, how well did people from Taiwan know the Philippines? Not well. The, the stereotype they have based on the domestic helpers and caregivers and the factory workers. That's one reason I, I created that kind of network because I wanted to introduce that there are a lot of Filipino group teachers like I do. Because when I came here, I was very fortunate to be part of an English school. I have the same pay as what the native speakers are paying. I'm glad because it gave me a ray of hope that Taiwanese do appreciate Filipinos. The reason why they have that kind of stereotype because it's that kind of thing they see for so many years. What have you made of the recent sort of pivot that we've had here in Taiwan towards Southeast Asia, this new southbound policy with lots of uh -huh, encouragement uh, of, yeah. to learn about our neighbors to the south and uh, also to start teaching Southeast Asian languages in schools? Have you felt any effects of that in your daily life or the recognition of Filipinos here? I believe so, because 2017, I went to the Filipino language training to get to know it myself, because I'm a blogger, so I wanted to share to the Filipino spouses here that you should try it, and it's not that difficult. So when I went there, I get to know how they wanted to introduce the language, and to be very honest with you, I was the one who recorded the voice for the audio. Really? For the textbook. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> this part here is beneficial, most especially if they would introduce it to all the students. Some other Taiwanese or locals are quite interested in the language, which is nice because they would learn the culture. Yeah, so this one impact of introducing the language. The second impact is that Taiwanese, the locals, and the children, they would get to see, wow, there are Filipino teachers. Wow, that's different. Not only the typical domestic helper, not the typical factory worker or the caregivers. Wow, there's a teacher. So, you know, there's a different kind of familiarity there that's happening in everyday life. So the bullying of having, a, like, you know, the stereotype of having a Southeast Asian mother, especially from Philippines and Indonesia and all the rest, they would feel like, no, I, we should stop it because, no, that's our teacher. He's a teacher. So they would earn a different kind of respect. And with the southbound policy, which is really mainly focused on tourism, you know, the greatest impact it does because I live in a heavily visited area. Many of the Filipinos come here. The locals would say, oh, you're a Filipino because it responds to their typical stereotype. So that's the big impact there. Like, not... All Filipinos here in Taiwan are workers. A lot of them right now are tourists. That's true. There is a, a visa sort of, I don't know if it's a visa waiver program, but uh, they're making it easier to come and visit. Yeah, because of the free visa. And, you know, I, I, I guess you're familiar with the gold ARC? A kind of residency permit for highly skilled professionals. That's also a part of the southbound policy. And with that, that requires professional Filipinos. So, you know, that opens another gate of professionals coming in here in Taiwan. So they get to know there are a lot of businessmen coming in here already. And uh, there are a lot of professionals like engineers. Just a few, few weeks ago, I did a speech introducing the English teachers and the English schools back in the Philippines. So the locals are like, oh my God, really? There is this school in the Philippines teaching English? So more and more Taiwanese are happy with their experience of learning English in the Philippines. So that's one good thing about southbound policy. As Taiwan and the Philippines get better acquainted, Dem will be here to help the process along.
Her Taiwanese Filipino family and her success in Taiwan's media make her a living example of just how much the friendship between these two neighbors can achieve. Once again, you can follow Jem at her YouTube channel, Hello Phil Thai. That's P H I L as in the Philippines and T A I as in Taiwan. If you want to know more about the Filipinos here in Taiwan,